All right, seventh grade algebra students, buckle up. Lesson 12 2, measures of dispersion. This is going to be something new for you. So first off, what is a measure of dispersion? It's a measure that describes the spread of the data set, how spread out it is. Kind of reminds me of range. So the simple, that is the simplest measure of dispersion. It's range. The range of the data set is the difference between the greatest value and the least value. So basically, I'm sure you remember calculating range back in the day. You just take the highest value minus the lowest value. So that's a measure of dispersion. That lets you know how spread out the data is. Let's apply that. So here we have two reality cooking shows here. Seems like everything's about cooking. They took off all the soap operas to put on those cooking shows. I think I can only show you one at a time. So show A, there's some ages, and show B has some ages. And I ask you to find the mean and range of the ages of the contestants on each show. And we're going to compare those results. So let's start with show A. The first thing I think we'll do is calculate the mean. That takes the longest because it's so mean. And again, remember to find the mean. We are going to add up all those values. So if you want to add them all up right now, you can hit pause. Welcome back. <laughs> Hopefully when you added up all these values, you got 300. That of course is not the average age. That would be craziness. Don't forget that you have to divide it by the number of numbers you added. So in this data table, there are 12 total. I'll take 300 divided by 12 and 300 divided by 12. We get an average age of 25. Right? The next thing I asked you for was the range. So for the range of the data in this table, and it looks like it's all kind of mixed up, I need to take the highest age minus the lowest age. So in looking at this, let's see, we've got a 20, a 19, a 20, there's a 30, and oh, I've got a 31. So there's the highest. And the youngest contestant on this show, let's all start with two of the 20s, 20s, 20s. It looks like someone who is 19. That's the youngest. So the range of this data is 12 years. There are 12 years between the youngest and oldest contestant. All right, now let's find the same data from show B. So to find the mean of this, again, we're going to go ahead and add them all up. So if you want to pause again, go right ahead. If you just want to be lazy about it and wait for me, go ahead and do that too. We'll add them all up. When you added them all up, you should have gotten 312. And same thing, there are 12 values in here. So when you take 312 divided by 12, wait for it, it's 26. So the average age on this show is 26. The range of ages. All right, let's see, the highest and the lowest here. It looks to me like the oldest is 48. And I'm going to subtract the youngest and the youngest on this one, a bunch of twos, twos, twos. Oh, it looks like it's also 19. So we subtract 19 from 48. And this one, the ranges have an age of 29 years. So there's 29 years difference between the youngest and oldest contestant. So the last part of what I asked you to do was to compare the results. Well, if we compare these results, we can see that their means are pretty close. The mean of show A was 25, the mean of show B is 26. So I would say the mean are about the same. One thing I do notice though, the range for show A is 12 and the range for show B is 29. Show B has a greater range. So I would say B has a greater range. What that means is that the contestants' ages are more spread out on show B. Maybe that would make it more exciting to watch. Who knows? All right. So now I'm going to tell you one of the disadvantages of using the range. I know it's sad because calculating the range just makes a lot of sense. High minus low, easy peasy. But there is a disadvantage. It only uses two of the values in the data set. And we talked about outliers last time. What if one of those two values was an outlier? 
a measure of dispersion that uses all the data values in the set would be much better. And thank goodness, there is a measurement that includes all of the values in the data set. It's called standard deviation. What is that, you say? I'm sure you're thinking that if you didn't say it out loud. The standard deviation of a data set is a measure of how much a typical value in a data set differs from the average. So if you figure out what your mean is, standard deviation tells you how far off from the mean each individual data value is. And there is a crazy little formula here that when we go to figure this out, we're going to really break it apart and it will not seem so bad, I promise you. But basically what you do to calculate the standard deviation, and again it's a measure of dispersion, you are going to subtract each data value by the mean, square it, and add it to all the rest, divide by how many data values you have in your set, and take the square root of that. So in this formula, n is the number of values in the data set. The symbol x with a little bar over the top of it, that represents the mean. We read it as x bar. A small standard deviation, so if you get a little number, a small standard deviation means that the data are clustered around the mean. They're pretty close to what the average is. If you get a large standard deviation, that means the data are more spread out. So in terms of thinking about range, if you end up getting a small standard deviation, it means that there's not really that great of a range. Most of them are pretty close together. If you get a large one, it just means that there's a bigger difference between the largest and the smallest value. Okay, so with that formula, I think we need to organize ourselves. I think that's going to be helpful, I promise you. I always give you things that helped me out when I took algebra. Hopefully these things will help you too. Uh, I always created a table to organize my work when calculating standard deviation. And this is how you can set it up. We'll make a list of all the values in the data set. Then we're going to list the mean of the data set. In our formula, it says that we are supposed to subtract the data value and the mean and then square it. So what we're going to do in our table is we'll have a nice column set up where you write the result of the subtraction problem, and we'll have another column where you can square the difference. After you get your table all set up, then all you need to do is calculate the square root of the quotient of the sum of the last column and the number of values in the data set. So probably not making a ton of sense right now, I'm guessing. That's why we're gonna do a couple examples. So go ahead and turn your page, I'll turn my page. Whew, I know, we're going to be busy. You have your calculator, right? Okay, so this asks you to find the standard deviation for show A. So I went ahead and I listed all of the ages from the data table for show A, and I went ahead and listed the 25 that we got for our mean. In the future, you will have to do that yourself when you get a homework assignment. So you'll list out all the data values we listed out the x bar, the mean. Now what we're going to do is we are going to subtract the original data value and the mean. We're taking the mean from it, so subtract kind of just like this. You'd be taking 20 minus 25. So I'll fill mine out, you fill yours out. When I take 20 minus 5, if your key change changing, then you're saying 20 plus negative 25. That would be a negative 5. 19 minus 25, or plus negative 25, that's negative 6. 25 minus 25 is 0. 27 minus 25, 2. Continue along subtracting. Check your values with mine. Check to make sure I didn't mess up. I make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We have the result of our subtraction problem. Now what we're supposed to do is square that result, okay? Now, when we're squaring the result, the result is negative 5. I want you to look at this when you see a negative value as the quantity of that negative value because negative 5 squared is different than the quantity of negative 5 squared. So negative 5 in parentheses, or the quantity of, to say it fancy-like, that means you're taking a negative 5 and multiplying it by another negative 5, which is positive 25. 
So we're, again, we're just taking this result and squaring it. So when you take negative 6 and square it, negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. 0 squared, of course, is 0. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. Again, there's a negative. I want to square the negative number. So negative multiplied by another negative is a positive. You're not going to get any negative results here. Another positive 16. Negative 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16. Negative 5 squared, 25. And then I have 36. Okay. So in that formula, back on the other page, and I'll flip to it. You don't have to. But in this formula, it says now that you are supposed to add up all of your data values squared, add those all together, and divide by how many you add it. And at the end, take the square root. So once you're here and you've finished filling out this portion of the table, now you're just going to add up all the values in this column. So go ahead, I'll wait. Hit pause if you want, if you don't want me to give it away, because I'm going to give it away in a second. When you add all of these numbers together, you should have gotten 212. Now, standard deviation. We take the square root of 212 divided by the number of numbers we added, which was 12. So in your graphing calculator, that's how you're going to want to do this and clear it out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on here. I will show you in class as well. But to get the square root, you hit second x squared. And it'll bring up your square root symbol. Um, it's not a bad idea to get in the habit of putting things around parentheses that you want to be done together. So I want that 212 divided by 12 to happen. I'm going to put parentheses around it. It doesn't matter in this case. It's just a good habit to have. So I'm going to type in 212 divided by 12, close my parentheses, hit enter. Oops, not negative. <laughs> hit enter, and we end up getting a pretty lengthy decimal. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that tenths place is okay by me. So if we have 4.20, the number next to the tenths place is 4 or less. So I'm going to leave it at 4.2. So this is almost equal, because we rounded, to 4.2. So what this means is that the values in the data set vary from the mean by 4.2, approximately. All right. And I think our range before said 12 years. Getting a little bit different of information from this. So this doesn't give you the same thing as the range. This is much better. It gives you a much more accurate picture of how far away these data values are from those measures of central tendency. Okay, now we're going to compare show B. Are you ready? I have this all set up for you. I took all of the ages for show B and listed them out for you. And remember, our mean for show B was 26. So your step one, subtract those values. Maybe you want to hit pause and try to do this one on your own and see what you got. Compare it with mine. You can check it after. So if you want to hit pause, go ahead. If you hit pause, welcome back. Congratulations. I'm very proud of you for trying this on your own. And here we should have 25 minus 26. There's a negative 1. 20 minus 26, negative 6, negative 4, 1, 22, 6, 19 minus 26, negative 7, 27 minus 26, hmm, it's a toughie, a negative 1, a negative 4, a negative 5, and a negative 2. So we just took the original data value, subtracted the mean from it, listed our result. Now it's our job to square it. And remember, if the data that you get is negative, I mean the quantity of it. So when you square it, square the negative version of it. So I'm just going to throw parentheses around all of my negatives so I don't forget. All right, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 6 squared, 36. Then I should have a 16, a 1, 484, 36, 49, 1, 1, 16, 25, and 4. So these are the most important values to us. And according to that standard deviation formula, 
we're supposed to add all of these up, divide by how many we added, and take the square root of that. So at this point, you should add up all of the values in that last column. And when you add up all the values in the last column, I got 670. I hope you did too. So with this 670, I'm supposed to take the square root of 670 divided by 12. So in your calculator, you can go ahead and press second x squared. That's going to bring up your square root sign. I'm going to put 670 divided by 12 in parentheses. Not that it matters for this, but it's just a good habit again. And I end up getting 7.47217059. I'm going to round that. That's too lengthy of an answer to the tenth place. And with this one, we need to round that 7.4 up to 7.5 because the number next to the 4 is 5 or more. So this one varies from the mean by about 7.5. So most of the values in the data set vary. So we can still see from those two results that this one has a greater deviation from what the mean is. All right. Now, last example. I put a smiley face there to hopefully cheer you up because I know this is pretty much a bear of a lesson. All right. I ask you to find the mean and standard deviation of this data set, but I give it to you as a line plot instead. So very similar to the, the last note set that we did with the number of books read. This doesn't mean one, two, three. This means that 31 happened one time, 32 happened twice, 33 never happened, 34 happened twice, 35 once, and 36 three times. So I don't have a table drawn out for you right now, so it's going to be your job to kind of make your own here. So the very first thing that we do, you don't have to make this perfect, but the very first thing that we should do is list all of the values in our data set. That's what the first X represents. So in looking at that, I'm going to scooch this up. If you look at 31, there's one dot above the 31. That means 31 happened in our data set one time. Above the number 32, there are two dots. That means I have two 32s. I'm not going to list 33 because it didn't happen. 34 happened twice, 35 once, and 36 three times. So there we have a list of all of the values in the data set. The next thing you're supposed to do is subtract the mean from that. So remember, we need the mean, right? Did I give you the mean for this problem? Nope, I did not. So that means we're going to have to find that. We find the mean by adding all of the values in our data set and dividing by the number of numbers we have. So when you add all of those up, again, if you want to hit pause and do this on your own, be my guest, that is fine. When I added them all up, I got 306. Hopefully you did too. And the number of numbers we added, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to take 306 divided by 9 to get a mean of 34. So that means the mean of this data set is 34. So I want to go back and I want to take all of the values in the data set and subtract 34 from them. Write that out. When you do that, I feel like I'm on a little assembly line here. We're going to list our result. That's kind of like the next column in our, in our data table. 31 minus 34, if your keep change changing, go ahead. That gives us negative 3. I'm going to put my th negative 3 in parentheses. 32 minus 34 is negative 2. I see that happens again. 34 minus 34, of course, is 0. Another 0. We have a 1, a 2, a 2, a 2. So at least these aren't crazy numbers to deal with. Okay, do you remember what you're supposed to do next? Yes, you have to square the result. So negative 3 squared, or the quantity of negative 3 squared, sorry, is 9. The quantity of negative 2 squared is 4. We have another 4. 0 squared is, of course, 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. So now we know what all of the results squared are. Do you remember what to do next? 
Yes, add them all together. So take 9 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. When you add all of those up, hopefully you got 30. All right, so the result of that is 30. Now, I am supposed to take the square root of 30 divided by the number of numbers that I added. Include those zeros because those were a result. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Same what we had before. All right, graphing calculator. I want you to press second x squared. Type in 30 divided by 9. When you hit enter, you get 1.82574, blah, blah, blah. We can round that to the nearest tenths place. I'm good with that. And this one ends up rounding to 1.8. So we can see that in that data set, those values vary from the mean by about 1.8, which makes sense because the range, I, my lowest value is 31, my highest is 36. Here's about the middle. I'm only I'm moving about two away in each set. All right. Hopefully this all makes sense. We'll do a starter to review a little bit more tomorrow, so no worries. Have a good night.